Hi. So tonight I've got a video that I think is going to be fun, both for the beginners and for even some of the seasoned pros. Um, so I'm going to be introducing uh, a thing that solved a problem for me uh, called Pie Bakery. So you've got yourself a Raspberry Pi, there's a Pi Zero W, nice and new, and you've got yourself an SD card and maybe some cool stuff to go with it. And uh, so the first thing is, is okay, you can either connect a mouse, monitor and keyboard, but perhaps you've got, a, got it in a gadget, you've got it in a robot, you want to re-spin it or you want to put some code on it without needing screen, keyboard and mouse. I had a, a long look at how to do this, um, both of the Pi Zero and the Pi 3 and the other Raspberry Pis. First thing I'll tell you is this is a lot easier with the Pi Zero than the others. But uh, let me go and introduce to you Pi Bakery and tell you what it does. So Pi Bakery, as it says, the easiest way to set up a Raspberry Pi. So this allows you to define what happens on your Raspberry Pi on its first boot and on every other boot, as it shows here. So what can you do in that? You can go and set up your Wi-Fi, you can go and turn on the I2C and the OTG, and I'll explain a little bit of what that means later. You can get it to go download a file, uh, perhaps run a command like a, a git pull, apt get, throw some packages on, uh, set up your uh, uh, I2C perhaps, then go and uh, grab your code from GitHub, and maybe on every boot it would go and update your code, and then run it. So we can do some pretty cool stuff with this tool. And straight away, I mean, even in the example site, you can see this is actually based on the rather cool Blockly tool. So it's all block based. So let me go and get you one of these open. So you've got import and export and write. So you can import a previous bit of work, export a bit of work and write it to an SD card. One of the things I'm going to be doing is I've got myself here, the Pi Zero. And I was saying why the Pi Zero is so very cool. So the Pi Zero and the Zero W have these tiny USB devices. Uh, one of them is just for power. One of them says USB. This one can be used for power, but it can also be used for OTG, which is USB on the go. What that actually means is with the right drivers loaded on this, you can get this to behave as various other devices, like a serial port or an ethernet uh, adapter. So you can actually connect it straight through to your laptop and talk to it. So we're gonna have a go at that right here and right now. So my first boot, you'll notice there's a boot menu here. This is all block programming. A boot menu for Pi Zero OTG. So we got Pi Zero OTG mode to ethernet with static IP, blur, requires restart to effect. So we can stick that in. So this will give it a static IP. It'll also be advertising on something called uh, Raspberry Pi.local, which uses the Bonjour protocol. And uh, I'll maybe put a link on downloading Bonjour for Windows. Um, there's uh, Avahi for Linux. And I think Mac's already come with this. But instead of Raspberry Pi.local, we can give it our own name. If you've got a room full of Raspberry Pis, you don't want them all to have the same name. So if I call this Orion. Uh, scroll pie because this has got the lovely scroll hat so it's going to be the Orion scroll pie dot local okay now we want to do stuff with the scroll fat so this requires a restart to take effect and I'm probably going to want to go and give it some way to download this but this is also a Wi-Fi device so we can go and set up the Wi-Fi and I have a super secret network name and password. We'll have it go do that. Then we'll say install a package. Back over here and we go to scroll fat. And there is a library here for scroll fat. With some rather cool pixel graphics. And we're going to go for straight for this sudo apt get install python scroll fat. So actually we don't need all that, we just need the package name. Package name there. And that's going to do the same as sudo app get install scroll fat. So already we've got something that will give us this ethernet port, our own host name, Orion underscore scroll underscore pi dot local, 
uh, it'll connect to my Wi-Fi and it'll install this package. Um, we could do one more thing and where is it? Here it is. So I'll take you through, I mean, we've got also, so enable a VNC server. We're looking to probably not have a VNC server. We'll just use SSH. Um, we've got install Apache so we can actually start ourselves a, a LAMP server on this um, on this Pi. IQ Audio IO sound card. I wonder if that's for things like the uh, fat DAC or some other things. So we saw the network things. We've also got download a file. Perhaps we could download just a Python example. So perhaps on the scroll fat there's some example code we can just drop in and run here. Oh, I'll write my own code later, but first we'll just drop it in because it's already conveniently on a web server. Um, boot option to console. So console desktop desktop logged in. I'll have to find out what we do with that. Use a password and host name. So we saw host name, but being able to set the password so you can secure your Pi. So let's just set that password to Orion for this one. So it's not Raspberry, so it's not quite as insecure. Cron job, so it can do time tasks. You can disable login over GPIO serial or enable, so you could have a GPIO serial with login console. Uh, that would be maybe handy if you wanted to connect some kind of Bluetooth serial device um, SPI kernel model I2C now we want to actually have the I2C kernel module um, because if we're going to be using scroll fat scroll fat uses I2C so we need that um, we can change SSH host keys which will make the thing more secure um, so it doesn't have the standard uh, Raspbian SSH host keys which doesn't sound particularly clever so we can get MIDI serial mass storage OTG I've not tried the mass storage might be fun. I mean, what's the worst can happen? Okay, so I've got a little bit crazy, added a whole bunch of options here. Now in other, you can do running commands, running a Python file, deleting stuff, reboot and shut down. Well, let's say we do a reboot here. So then all of this restart takes effect and goes. And then we will run the script. So let's drop in here. I'll scroll fat examples what do we have scroll fat type in the number okay well we're not gonna be able to do that so Conway's game of life sweet okay so we'll copy this raw link straight from github pop that in here so we should get that and save as life.py okay and then here we'll do oh, we don't want to run command we want to run python so we've got a run python file home pi life.py write this across to the pi and let's see what we get so we take our SD card and I have to use an adapter for my laptop. Now perhaps I want to do something with this project later. So let's just do an export of this. And we'll export it and we'll call this recipe life.xml. Now what's cool about this recipe is once I've done it on one, I can perhaps change the host name and password and something uh, an IP and then we run this on many cards so I can do many cards with the same thing um, and perhaps there's even room for sharing the recipes because the recipes are just XML so let's just go in and take a look um, now okay admittedly this is not the prettiest XML um, you know it's it's pretty raw but we can uh, perhaps we could prettify that and tidy that up um, you could stuff those into a git repo. Uh, perhaps you've, there would be some nice way to delegate where the password fields come from, I don't know. It's as simple as clicking this write button, which will pop up uh, the SD card you want to write to. Um, now I'm gonna go with Raspbian Lite. If you wanna have VNC and a UI, you're gonna want Raspbian Full. Um, and there may be packages where I want to have cameras on these and I want to have full as well. Let's just start write. And off we go, writing to SD. Um, so this will take a couple of minutes. Okay, write successful. I'll close that. 
and we can eject this put this on there this goes on pretty good um, I suspect it's more my soldering than anyone's headers and uh, we'll pop the micro SD in okay so it'll take about what um, a couple of minutes to go download everything it's going to download enable all the ports it's going to enable get this code from the internet what I don't have on this is I don't have any kind of console but I think the whole point of this is you don't really need to so let's see how far we get just plugging it straight in there uh, it's a bit hard in this case actually because you can't see the uh, the blinking lights okay and we'll give it a couple of minutes to go and uh, download what it can download and get itself ready now one of the things that will happen when this is ready is I will get a notification on Windows that it's going to enable that Ethernet port and also the uh, device because I said to try and put it as a mass storage device. I don't even know how that's going to work on this. I don't know if I'm going to be able to see my root file system, which would be pretty cool because then I'd be able to just hack away at files on there from my Windows box. That would be neat. You can do it with SFTP once you've got uh, SSH anyway, but still. Ah, oh, there we go. Can you see that blinking away there? And that is Windows having registered there's a device here. There it was. <laughs> it's all a bit fast and a bit random, but once I uh, plugged it in, apart from looking at the lights, I didn't have to do anything. And obviously it was a fair chunk of elapsed time there before it started. That's also insanely bright for this camera, but uh, you can definitely see it's active and awake and doing its thing. Okay, so we've got device manager here. Let's see if so. Storage controllers. Um, no, it doesn't show anything there. Uh, network adapters. So I don't see. That's the one built in the laptop. So we did not get the OTG Ethernet. Now I'll admit I'm perhaps going a little bit crazy enabling both, and I'm not entirely sure how that's going to behave. So perhaps I should only turn one of them on and not both. Ah, look, we've either got mode Ethernet or mode mass storage. Right, okay, so there's only one mode at a time, so they are mutually exclusive. Now, I've got to be fair, um, I, I, while mucking around with OTG and mass storage and so on, um, this just being able to tell it to connect to my Wi-Fi, download the code and run the code, is already pretty awesome. Um, now the OTG, when I didn't tinker and just said Ethernet and didn't try and do Ethernet and mass storage, uh, worked before. Um, unfortunately, it's just like me to try something more complicated on the next time I try things. So what I can do, oh, here we go, mass storage gadget. So what have we got here? Unknown floppy disk drive. Linux file store gadget USB device. Okay, so perhaps this floppy disk drive it registered as. Um, does it have anything Windows will recognize as a drive, or is it some kind of X4 device that Windows isn't gonna not play ball with? Well, look, there's nothing. Uh, there's nothing down in these. So, oh yes, there is. I think it's got a floppy drive. Oh, now I nearly didn't notice that. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? A floppy drive which stores somewhere on the Pi? I don't know. Documentation required. Okay, well, let's go and uh, perhaps modify this. So I'm going to see if I can SSH into this because it's now on my Wi-Fi wi -Fi network. And I don't know if my Wi-Fi network will have the Orion scroll local no it doesn't know what that is okay without creating the OTG or without knowing the Wi-Fi address you still have to uh, shut it down and ceremoniously by unplugging which is not recommended we'll do that for now it's not the cleanest way to do things and we'll pop the card out now when I return to Pi Bakery, I pop my card in. 
So this has popped something up. Pi Bakery has popped up to say, it's been detected, you have an SD card that's been used with Pi Bakery before. Do you want to load in the existing configuration so you can make changes to it? Yes. And now notice what it's loaded back in. The on first boot files have gone and now it's only got the on every boot. So I'm just gonna do on every boot, we'll say set OTG mode to Ethernet. We'll hit update. And that's not doing an awful lot. So that would be very handy just to be able to swap once we've got to pay Pi Bakery a couple of these bits and update. But I don't know if it's written something to that card. So can we have a look at the card? So here's actually what we get on the card. So this is almost kind of a mostly Raspbian, um, but we've also got this Pi Bakery folder. This has got your first boot log. Um, let's not use note, Notepad. Let's open with code. Okay, now look at this. We've actually got a log of everything it went and did. So if there are any problems, we'd be able to determine what they were. You can see it going and downloading stuff. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it takes a long time. Oh, and it ran a fat make file system here to your mass storage. Wow. Okay, that's pretty cool. And obviously, it did the Ethernet bit and then the mass storage bit. So, okay, well, we might have to find out if there's a way we can, I don't know, subvert that so we can, well, it would have to do something crazy to make uh, fat behave like uh, one of these other things. So let's actually open this folder. Let's open the code. You can see what else we've got here. We've got the next boot, not next boot, sure. Um, every boot log. Okay, we don't have a log. And every boot sure. Okay, that just tells it what it's going to run. So, blocks XML. I think this is what we exported. So, on boot run Python. So look, it's not stuck our OTG block in there. So this doesn't appear to do anything and there's no other, I mean, it's alive. It's just, it's not doing this update, which is a shame because that looked like an awesome feature. Can we also block info? Oh, we get block help here in an incredibly small font, I'm afraid. Okay, and this is disable OTG, so you disable or set one of the different modes. I'm hoping I don't have to write it all over um, the whole thing. Pretend the process has just run. A bit of video magic. Okay, so I've now written one with that Ethernet thing on it. Now, I've actually conned uh, reported on the, the uh, GitHub repository, uh, there is a bug tracker, so I have reported that the uh, update didn't quite work as expected. We've got to plug that in, and that'll take another 90 seconds to go. It'll probably be a bit, bit quicker, because I think one of the things that took a bit of time back there is when I told it to also enable the, uh, the storage, the mass storage, I think it went and did uh, a FAT format and it made itself uh, a big FAT file system to work on that with. Um, we can have some fun with that because maybe we can make it so it mounts on both the Pi and Windows and then just runs files dropped in there or, or maybe takes a text file and scrolls it across the, uh, the scroll here. So you could do all kinds of crazy stuff with that. That would be uh, quite amusing I suppose. Um, so I have to look at seeing if I can write code that can perhaps read it, you know, whatever's been written there. And that took far too long, but I think it's just about to spring to life. <laughs> okay, um, but there was a little pip from Windows, so I think you can see we've got this USB Ethernet whatever RNDIS gadget and if we go to this address here which should be that Orion scroll pi dot local so let's try that again Orion scroll pi dot local no let's just try going straight to that address 169.254.64 so we do pi 
and we do Orion, not Raspberry. So it took my new password in there, and we're in. So I don't quite know why, but it does know it's Orion underscore scroll underscore pi. One thing I could think of that might be causing some problems with that, and we can verify this. If I do host name Orion scroll pi with dashes, bang bang. So if I just reboot this, now it should come back up. Uh, it should come back with the new host name. So I need to change this over there. And let's see if we can ping Orion scroll pi. We're still not getting much luck with Bonjour. If I restart this session, it didn't actually make that hostname change. Hostname. Don't know if you can hear that, but there is the faintest of whines. Um, corresponding with what these LEDs are doing and I'm wondering if there's just uh, some interesting connection on a uh, on a resistor or something that's making it buzzy <laughs> just on the edge of hearing um, and I'm not sure we'll be able to pick it up in the mics just coming back there we go okay let's try it without any characters at all no funny business ah okay so I guess you've got to stick to uh, pretty much ASCII characters there then when well, I say ASCII characters no you're going to have to stick to an even more limited character set than that, aren't you? Alphanumeric. Okay, but hey, we're able to ping that. Uh, I know we've got a strange address. That'll be some kind of strange uh, IPv6 address. But that means if I do a new session and I do Orion scroll pi dot local via SSH and we're in. And here we are. Um, notice that this is still the same hostname we originally had. So what does it think if I do hostname now? Hmm, hostname is reset, but maybe it's actually trimmed out those characters anyway. I don't know, I'll have to find out more about Xerocon. Um, although the Ethernet OTG bit won't work on the Pi 3, the rest of what this does, including registering my local Wi-Fi as well, downloading code, running the code, will work on the Pi 3 and even older Pis. So if you're kind of building a robot or a gadget, a music player, a scrolly thing that does Conway's Game of Life like this, I mean, this tool, just, just getting you to the, I've got my code on the SD card running right now. I think it's pretty awesome. So it's Pi Bakery, which is at piebakery.org. And I'm using a scroll fat and I've just got the scroll fat life demo code running. Goodbye, I'm waving and the Raspberry Pi is waving too. Um, if you uh, enjoyed this, uh, please uh, hit that like button and subscribe, please, and uh, leave some comments below, and see the rest of my channel for more stuff with uh, gadgets and pies and ESPs and Arduinos, robots and code and what have you. I am going to try and do some more stuff with the CNC and the 3D printer at some point. I've just got far too many of these gadgets I'm having fun with right now. So, see you next time. Bye!